Zero MQ is a relatively new uh, library that should have pretty much any programmer working on parallelism, uh, distributed systems, scalable systems, or networking in something of a tizzy. Um, rather than explaining why, uh, what I'm going to do is a quick live demo. Those of you who are not into networking, uh, don't be discouraged by the uh, initial networking look of the API. So I'm going to start the demo in uh, Lua script, uh, and I'm using a scripting language just so that we can see things happen as they occur. So the first thing that you have to do is to uh, get a ZMQ context, which is a wrap around the library to allow uh, different versions to interoperate. Uh, then we need to create an endpoint. Yes, it's called a socket, uh, but that's just so that this API can look socket-like and have nice uh, thread handling by the operating system. Uh, the downstream is a socket pattern. A downstream socket is one that allows sending, but never actually does any receiving. And this is going to be a work generator. So, okay, next step is to uh, connect that socket to something. Now, at this point, uh, this is a live demo, so there is nothing actually listening there. So we're gonna just, we're creating that socket. And here's where we get our first divergence from ordinary sockets. I can immediately queue something up to be sent on that socket. Now, I'm going to switch down to my server window and uh, begin uh, writing my uh, first little server process. The uh, socket this time is a ZMQ upstream, which is a socket that only ever receives, never actually sends. And I'm going to uh, connect that to the uh, address that we used before. And as you can see that immediately uh, returned the first client. So now let's uh, add a, uh, a loop here to uh, just sit here and print everything that it receives. Okay, so there it received hello. And if we uh, send hello to, see that arrives there as well. Nothing particularly fancy about this so far. That just demonstrates that it's a fairly familiar API and that it's pretty simple to get going. So now I'm going to mix things up a little bit just to uh, let ZMQ show some of its uh, under the hood capabilities. The client in the top left, we've already bound the socket to a address. But one of the things we can do with ZMQ is we can now bind it to an additional address and I'm going to bind a different type of socket, an IPC connection uh, using the file slash temp ZMQ demo. I'm uh, now going to uh, create here my uh, Python uh, client, uh, which again is uh, pretty similar, uh, requires a context, uh, create a socket, pardon my slightly slower typing here, I'm not that used to Python, Okay, and again we want a loop, just carry on printing. So we now have that listening on that socket. Uh, now let's see what happens if we uh, send hello again. Well, the hello went to the first server. Let's try sending uh, hello to again. And as you can see, it came across on the second server. Different type of connection, different uh, same socket as far as the client is concerned. Uh, what we've got happening here is we have the uh, ZMQ is uh, automatically, transparently multiplexing a connection for us. Now, uh, just before I finish, uh, I have here a C version of the client uh, that I wrote in Lua. I've got some hash includes, uh, but as you can see, pretty much the code is kind of along the same lines. Uh, we get the context. Uh, we uh, create the socket, we uh, connect it to the port, and so forth. Um, in addition to being able to have a single outgoing connection connect to multiple uh, remote destinations, uh, it's also possible for a uh, socket to a socket to be listening on multiple uh, different uh, protocols and so on. Uh, they also provide uh, PGM uh, support for pragmatic multicast. 
Uh, so we could do something like that and have a uh, multicast listener. Uh, really the elegance of uh, 0MQ is the amount of stuff that it does through a pretty conventional standard uh, socket appearing API. So uh, to finish I'm going to show you uh, an, a use case or an example of using uh, 0MQ for parallelism. Uh, I've written my own uh, set of class wrappers called async worker which encapsulate uh, message passing of workloads via uh, 0MQ's in-process uh, socket type. It uses the same API uh, but it uh, provides very very efficient message passing and you can always have uh, an in-process socket connected to off-machine uh, sockets as well so that you can uh, distribute work to local workers or remote workers uh, without any real change to uh, code. Uh, my test here uh, is going to create a, a, a vector, an array of 50 million floats uh, assign each one uh, a value equivalent to its position in the uh, array. I'm going to take a batch size argument from the command line. I'll uh, get to that shortly. If it's zero, the batch size uh, says let's run the, uh, the entire thing in one serial operation. Uh, my crunch class encapsulates the work. The work function does the actual crunching of the entire range and result stores that into our uh, destination. Uh, reduction. The uh, parallel version basically splits the work into uh, sub-ranges uh, using iterators to uh, create uh, crunch objects with the sub-range start and end, same result. Uh, async queue to uh, ship the uh, message or rather a pointer to the uh, created object to a worker thread which will then call the workers work function and uh, finally get results which waits for all of the work to be executed and then pulls back the uh, results and adds them together into the uh, reduction variable result. So the crunch class itself uh, derived from my async workers run and return uh, class takes uh, input, uh, start and end range for the uh, block of work that you want processing and a pointer to where you want the uh, reduction stored the uh, work function iterates across the, uh, the range specified and performs, in this case, a piece of completely uh, meaningless make work. It's just a bunch of operations that will take a lot of time. Uh, adds those together into private sum and then when the result function is called, which is called in uh, serial from get results, uh, we add the sum that we produced into the uh, reduction. So let's compile that and give that a quick test uh, with we're running in serial and that took a little over six seconds so uh, now I'm going to uh, try running that with uh, 128 per batch and you see we halved the time going to now try running uh, with 1024 per batch. See it took even less time. The advantage of using 0MQ over using Intel's threading building blocks or OpenMP is that because we're using that socket based uh, connection oriented API that provides uh, multiplexing for us we could very easily go in and distribute this across multiple machines.